the way it came about was this. When I was very small, I wanted to be a man who went around the world collecting animals for zoos. <laughs> you know, that's, that was my sort of astronaut uh, engine driver moment. Uh, but the only thing I was ever any good at at school was reading and writing. I was um, one of those children that was kind of regarded as being, you know, could do better, should do better, won't do better. And uh, as, as a result of this, I uh, disappointed my parents grievously by failing my 11th class. I don't know if you're familiar with the, uh, the old UK system of the 11th class. Uh, basically, you finished your primary schooling, you, um, you did an exam called the 11th class, and uh, if you passed it, you went in one direction, you went to a grammar school, you did exams called, come in, hello, you did exams called G GSEs, GSEs, I keep wanting to put the C in there, but there was no C then. And uh, you were a clever kid. You had a brain. You had a future. You went to um, grammar school. You were going to be a professional, a teacher, uh, something in the professions. If, on the other hand, you failed your 11 plus, you were a kid with no brain, no future. Uh, you went to a secondary modern school where you did uh, examinations called CSEs, which weren't as good. They were for slightly more stupid people. And, um, you know, you were going to go into trades. Welcome to the Happy Conference. My name's Melvin Burgess. I write for teenagers and uh, have done now for about 20 years, really, particularly older teenagers. And um, some years ago, I, um, I, I did a memoir. Everyone was always accusing me of uh, the sort of rotten teenagers in my books being me, and they weren't actually. So I did a memoir. I thought, right. I'll write about those ages 13 to 19 and um, I was expecting the whole thing to be a, a muddy, messy uh, and rather unpleasant experience reminding myself of all the failures, the misery, the not enough girls, the not enough friends, the, the sort of total lack of grace and, um, and cohesion that uh, I seemed to have at that age. And I had a number of surprises really and one was, was that I came out feeling a lot fonder of myself. Um, the one I went into it, and I thought, well, you know, there were some friends, and there were some good times, and so forth, and I began to get the impression, really, that the, the bad time that I've had might not have been quite as much um, down to me as I thought, and uh, it, it has made me feel that uh, the experience of being a teenager, and perhaps um, the teenager of being at high school, is actually um, a cultural thing, and mm. the, uh, the, the, the wide misery which so many people seem to go through, and which we expect teenagers to go through, isn't actually necessary, it's an imposed thing um, that, that's put on us by the way in which we treat people of that age, by the kind of, and principally I suppose, by the kind of life that we expect people of that age to leave. Are you, are you pointing the finger at schools? I'm pointing the finger at schools. Yeah. I kind of think that, uh, you know, those few years when you are transformed from a child into being the person you're going to be for the rest of your life, you know, really ought to be, for uh, most of us, I'd have thought, really, really exciting. It ought to be a period mm. in which, you know, I mean, teenagers at their best, they're catalysts, aren't they? they mm. They're melting pots, they mm. bring everything together, they take sort of bits of crappy comics and Shakespeare and Beethoven and rap and they and it, it comes out of something surprising and new, which, which no one over the age of sort of 25 is, is capable of doing in, mm. in, in the same sort of mm. way. And that's sort of thrilling, isn't it? And mm. exciting mm. and enchanting and wonderful and so forth. And yet, um, we have a sort of miserable, frustrated, stuck experience at that age. Yeah. And when you look at the kind of education that you get, which isn't about sort of self-discovery, it isn't about um, collusion, it isn't about uh, bringing different things together and sparking and, and being creative and so forth. It's about learning about dead poets and about practising for being a responsible adult later mm. in life. So it's a real denial of the nature of what it is to be a, a teenager, in my view. And um, uh, so that, 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 was, that, was the, that was the conclusion I came out of writing my memoir, and that's the conclusion that I came about the nature of education. Mm. Really, in, in certainly in England and possibly further afield. Well, I, you you wrote an article for um, the Teaching English uh, uh, website, yes, um, yes, making some of these points and, cri right. and criticising sort of the the, the, the attitude of schools and 
questioning whether, in fact, schools are the place where, 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 where teenagers yeah. in particular yeah, yeah, uh, no, should it's, be. It's, yeah. But the reaction from mm. teachers or world, uh, worldwide mm. uh, was quite universal in, in support of what you yes. said. Every, all yeah. teachers know this, don't yes. they? Yes. They all know that they're, they, you know, good teachers go into the profession because they want to, they love learning and they uh, want to be inspiring and they want to inspire people. And they, and they find it really difficult because of the system. It's not, it's not to do with teachers. Yeah. And indeed, anyone who's, um, who's come through uh, the educational system and has, has managed to maintain a, a, you know, a love of learning um, always has a teacher or two in the background. I did, and everyone that I know who, who, mm. who's mm. got an intellectual life at all has a, um, a teacher there who has inspired them and has spotted them and has encouraged mm. them and so forth. Mm. But the lessons and the curriculum and the textbooks and the design of education is really against it. Yeah. And it's a struggle. You know, you are rescued from education by individual yeah. teachers. Is, yeah. is, 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 yeah. is the way it works. Yeah. So they're working in spite of the system rather. Than they're working in spite of the system. Yeah. You know, and, and we're, we're really, it's just not focusing on what teenagers are good at no. and where they should be, and yeah. you know what they can do and how um, exciting they are. And you just feel as though, particularly as you know, the economy gets worse and worse, and competition gets worse and worse, that it's more and more about churning out more. You know, reusable sausages in the right length and the right shape and the right form to be a sort of decent, um, hard-working workforce for yesterday. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's 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 hard to see what the solution on a a statewide principle would be. Though I mean, I I, I can see how you might solve that. Mm. Individual private schools mm. would yeah. take a different approach. But I mean, if you're if you're a, a state legislator, for, you know, looking at pro, 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 providing for a complete country, for a complete state. Well, you know, um, th there is a genuine, a genuine conflict here, and I think that um, one thing that you, first of all, you have to admit right from the start is that all learning isn't necessarily going to be about, uh, you know, growing you mm. as a separate individual. It can't be entirely individualistic in that way. And it can't all be about the future either. Um, and you know, I think there has to be some sort of acceptance that um, you know you are training people as well as teaching them, and you are making uh, continuity. And it is it is inevitably, um, however um, much we might want it not to be, about fitting into society. Mm. It's just that 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 other aspect is is just ignored. So you know, I don't think that it's it's a question of that the whole thing. <laughs> has to be simply about individuals fulfilling their potential because otherwise you'd, you'd, you'd just get a load of sort of frantic, slappy little, you know, Michelangelo's poncing around the place <laughs> who, who you'd probably want to kick into touch. But, uh, you know, and, and you know, th there is this thing, as you make choices, um, of course, you know, you close down other choices, don't you? So, you know, there is a question of, um, you know, focusing. If you focus on something, then you're not focusing on something else. So it is a question of, you know... Um, as you, as you move forward, you do, in a sense, narrow your choices. So, you know, I think you have to accept that, and there's no good being completely idealistic about it. But you can fight, I think, and th there's no reason why national education shouldn't allow for uh, that cultural um, excitement and mm. melting pot mm. and uh, that ability to transform things and to be catalysts. Especially as, as, as you say that... Um, so, so many teachers already know this and would be on your side. They know this and that they'd love to do it, they, they want to have uh, the opportunity to do it and they are good teachers are constantly on the alert to find kids and sometimes, you know, because teenagers are so keen on doing this sometimes, it's just saying, oh you're really great at something yeah. and bang, off they go, you know, and uh, you know, I, I, I've seen this, I sometimes go to schools and you get a, you know, a really difficult kid there and uh, you think, right, this one's for you and mm. you can and you can, you can, you can, you can set kids like that alright. You can do it with people at any age, actually. You know, just by sort of ah, being mm. enthusiastic. You know, sometimes it's all that's all it requires. It's, you know, so it's, it isn't even difficult. Uh, is my feeling. You know, often. I mean, sometimes it is. Sometimes you know, it's hard to reach people. But you know, mm. people, particularly people at that age, they're just wide open for it, in my view. And um, I, I just think we're scared to give them that opportunity and find it threatening, and that we don't like them very much. We don't like teenagers very much. I have this little theory yeah. that um, when people think of um, teenagers, they have this image of this sulking, incompetent, stumbling brute who um, is uh, unable to sort of think about very much and do very much and is lazy and incompetent. The person they think about is themselves. <laughs> <laughs> they have this memory of themselves as being sort of horrible. And it's probably true that they were horrible, but only because they were frustrated um, and, and they weren't given the opportunity to sort of sparkle. 
in the way that they would naturally sparkle. Thanks very much. Good, my pleasure.